happens to everyone at this time of day. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. I am here today with Debra. Hello, Debra. Hi, Dahlia. We're gonna. We were just discussing what her story is is really about, and um, obviously, as usual, there are many, many different factors in your journey. But I think one of the main things that that you've gone through is really from going from being in a place where you're you're very successful at your job in your career, but there's that whole next level, and you you know you weren't you weren't cracking into that next level, cracking into the next level of income, um, going from being successful at this level and, and leveling up to, to the next one and also escaping a lot of that confusion. So I will pass the microphone over to you. Can you just introduce yourself and tell us what are who are you and what are you currently doing right now? Sure, so um, my name is Deborah. Uh, I am from Portugal, actually, uh, so are you, <laughs> how? And, uh, and that's how, well, kind of how we, we started talking. Um, but anyway, I am. I have a, a background in communications and journalism. I specialize in health, so that's that's what I've been doing for more than ten years. And uh, this year, so around the time that I did the program with you, I started working with World Health Organization as a communications and dissemination officer. Um, so I'm I'm in the same area that I built up, and it's really the area that I'm I'm passionate about, and I am quite. Um, in a way, it's a bit embarrassing to put it this way, but it's it's fascinating to be working in this area during a pandemic because there's so much you can you can learn from it, and um, yeah, it's just it's amazing time to be in. Although obviously, for many reasons, there is other job. Yeah, so I think that's that's a, a really interesting thing about you is that you were already working in health communications, so you were loving. The job, um, I would say, the role that you had, you know, you had found, you'd already found your calling. Let's say um, you're a health communication specialist. You love it. You'd been networking. You were doing really, really well. And um, and one thing, I, oh yeah, one interesting fact that we forgot to mention is we went to university together and we both studied sure. journalism together. And then we both went about our journeys, etc. And um, and yeah, and I, I mean, I, I could see your journey and everything, and I could see that you were doing very well. So um, I just think it's interesting because a lot of people will say, I'm sure you had people around you who would have said, but Deborah, why would you think about doing career coaching? Or why are you, you know, expressing that you're not quite happy where you are? You're doing so well. And one thing you mentioned to me is also being from Portugal and then going and working internationally and coming back, you started to be a bit of this big fish in a small pond and people thought you were really successful, but it's like you had that feeling that, there was more out there for you. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, a good way to put it. Just because um, I was feeling fortunate enough to be able to come back to where I'm from, to Portugal, after having lived for ten years mostly in the UK, where we met, and also Germany and Brussels. And and I was lucky to come back and see that I could work in my field and become this very niche person that people would come to and ask questions, which was very odd to me at, at the beginning, because uh, obviously it's a field that is growing in many in many countries, but somehow here most people didn't really know what it was and uh, how it worked. So uh, in a way, it was quite quick and easy to start building a network here. It's quite a small country and, and I live in, um, in, in the capital city, so it was easy to, to get into the to that field. But um, I started working as a, um, an independent consultant, so working more internationally, but, but based in Portugal, while also building my own network and opportunities in Portugal. And suddenly I was just surrounded by all these options, which were really fascinating and very um, challenging and also making me feel more and more and every day more passionate about the field. Um, but after maybe about three years, I was finding myself in this place where even though I was constantly worried about not having a, a new project or a new job lined up uh, because I was basically freelancing, actually, I never got, uh, in, got to a point where I didn't have work. <laughs> actually, my struggle was to take time off. So why would I always be worried about finding a job or a new project or a new consultancy if, if things kept coming to me? And then obviously with the pandemic, even more things changed. 
So obviously everything was great, but what was missing at that point was my own mental health and my own mm. uh, well-being and being able to, you know, stop and work. So why why would I have come back to Portugal and be with friends and family if I was then stuck at home working all the time? Yeah. So, uh, I felt that I was reaching a point where I, I was good enough at what I did, but maybe I wasn't capitalizing on it as much as I could, or even finding my own um, niche within my niche. Like what, mm-hmm. what, what am I really good at? What should I stop doing? What does it take, mo- like, what takes me too long to do? And that mm-hmm. sort of choice, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think your niche was quite strong, but I think the big issue was, what do you want to do? Not just what does everyone else want you to do? Because you're you're good at many things and so many people were approaching you for different projects, but to figure out, wait, what what do I want to do in all of this? And yeah. um, like, give, give yourself permission to figure that out and then going for your own, you know, your own objective. Yeah, and I think that was the probably the one of the big aha moments. <laughs> with the program, which was to actually, first of all, to take the time to sit down and think through things. And I think being a freelancer is very easy to get lost in your own thoughts. It's quite a lonely place to be at sometimes. And you don't really stop to think, what am I doing? What do I enjoy doing? You don't really talk to a colleague to say, oh, I'm fed up with this, or I would like to do more of that. Um, And I think, um, you know, the exercises you gave and forcing myself or even just being able to talk to you right um to to think about what do I enjoy doing when I wake up what kind of tasks make me motivated what what are the ones that are um making me tired or less motivated and if I look at someone's job and admire it why why is that so and what prevents me from doing that or Mm -hmm. you know all these questions that I wasn't even taking time to think through yeah. I think those were You're the so stuck in the busyness of day to day. Yeah, it's kind of a hamster wheel, really. And in a way, it reminded me of when I lived in London, which I, I do call a, a hamster wheel quite often, but mm. for different reasons. But in in a way, it's the same feeling just because you just keep doing, right? You keep yeah. living, you keep doing, you keep doing your job, you keep uh, ticking boxes, checklists, and mm-hmm. to do lists, but you don't really stop to think, okay, what? What should I be doing? What do I want to do? Uh, what makes me really motivated? And I think that that was the big, the big difference to me this time, was to think about those things. Yeah, and sometimes the busier that you are, the more you need to really be extra careful that you do find a way to stop and think, because otherwise you're on that hamster wheel. And the busier you are, the faster your your life is passing you by, the faster time is is moving. And if you don't stop to go, whoa, am I still heading in the right direction? It's going to be five years later. Yeah. You're going to be way off somewhere that maybe you didn't want to be. And it may be even somewhere that's really hard to, to get out of. Yeah. And one of the things that I was getting really frustrated towards the end of my freelance period, which I wouldn't say my freelance life because you never know what the future holds, but um, was that things were coming to me and I... I lost control of my mailbox. I'm still not completely in control, uh, which is something that freaks me out a little bit. But, you know, uh, things coming in, opportunities, things to read, uh, events, um, invitations, Mm. things that I had committed to and suddenly just wasn't able to respond. That's not my way of working. And I like to, to stick to what I commit to. And I was reaching a point where I just had to say no learn to say no but almost because I had to and not because I was strategically thinking what should I say no to what should I say yes it was just Mm -hmm. a matter of survival almost because I I needed to sleep and to eat and (laughs) do my own thing and I had all my friends around me telling me that I should slow down so Mm -hmm. um it's good to start thinking about those choices before you reach that point I'd say Mm -hmm. basically it all happened at the same time that's yeah, amazing. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so before we get into what happened next, why, what was the key thing that made you actually join the program? Because like we're saying, I mean, you were successful, like in anyone's eyes, even in your own eyes. I mean, you were very proud of the your own progress that you've made, but what was it that made you realize, okay, I could be doing better 
And what was it that made you actually take that decision to, to do a course like this? Yeah, I don't think it was one day waking up thinking I need to change something. It was a build up. This was around the second lockdown uh, of the pandemic where I was basically just constantly working and then going out for walks. That's all I did. <laughs> and I was extremely tired, not sleeping well. Uh, still enjoying the job, but knowing that I wasn't delivering as I as I wanted, and I wasn't even putting as much effort and energy as I used to, um, enough to to tell me tell myself that I was enjoying my own job. So I remember thinking it was quite interesting, actually. I remember thinking, let me try and take one afternoon a week just to um, to read. Not, not to read the book, but to read all these articles that I've been saving to try and uh, not have something very concrete to do, but to navigate on the internet and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's when I allowed myself a little bit of time to, um, to check some things, including maybe I did not save something that was popping up on my, you know, we are friends and I knew mm -hmm. I had seen your videos. So it wasn't something I had saved to come to, to later, but I remember stopping there and maybe, I don't know, there was probably some question that made me think, mm, this is mm. kind of what I've been struggling with. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I didn't have anything concrete in my mind, but clearly I knew that I had to change something. I had to start saying no to something and I didn't know where to start. So I mm. guess it was a combination of not feeling well and mm -hmm. someone sending me a question that made me think, okay, let's try. Or not, not even let's try, let's see what this is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how I got into the questions and the, um, your first step, which is the career roadmap. Yeah, the career roadmap session. That's where you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to book this thing. Yeah, so that's what I, mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the, the shift because things were boiling in my head already, but I yeah, wasn't yeah. aware, I wasn't necessarily up. aware that I, I wanted some kind of coaching or mm -hmm. that I wanted a big change. All I knew was that I needed some kind of help or that I needed to just uh, get my act together to make mm -hmm. things change and have a life again. Mm -hmm. Because I was tired of just working. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so it sounds like things were, yeah, the, it was almost like you were heading towards burnout, I guess. And then you knew that before you reached that point, you had to, you had to make a change. Luckily, you did something before reaching that point. Some people wait until like, yeah, they get it. Um, but the cool thing is that in, in all of this, like it was it wasn't just about avoiding burnout. It was also about getting uh, to that next level. And I know one thing that we didn't mention yet was also the financials, like for Portugal, for everything you were doing well, very well financially. But there was like a whole new level of, you know, of financial stability and abundance that you were not accessing you know because you were comparing yourself to maybe something down here when you could be comparing yourself to mm -hmm. this other this other level and so that's also a cool thing that you've been able to to unlock which I think is very 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 deserve uh deserved um yeah the level you're at in your specialty as well yeah and you know these things uh you know we, we talk very often about guilt mm -hmm. and uh I was very conscious and I am very conscious that mm -hmm. for for standards in Portugal I was doing quite well um, and so it almost stops you from thinking that you need to go somewhere else mm. or that you need to, to step it up. But at the same time, uh, especially knowing how much my career and my work had, had how, how much of my personal life I had to sacrifice for that, it came to a point where I thought, okay, let me just at least be a little bit more um, stable or comfortable financially so I could think about the personal side of things, which was mm -hmm. something that I had not neglected, but not maybe put in the first as my first priority and yeah and I think it was another aha moment when I realized that it's yeah, basically you don't have to compare yourself to anyone right that's not mm. a healthy thing to do but it's very common and yeah and I just realized that for the investment I had made in my career and and the time I spent working and all the things that I had had been doing and the fact that my field of work grew so much in uh, because of the pandemic yeah. I realized okay maybe what I do is actually even I have to value it more mm -hmm. and and that makes a difference when you're trying to find your clients and, and you're making um you know proposal for them then you think okay 
who else could be doing what I am doing not many in the, these circumstances? Of course, there will be a lot of people, but it doesn't mean that I should not value myself more than I used to. And yeah. it, it's, it's still hard for me to think that way, but you kind of have to convince yourself that that's, that's what everyone should be doing, right? And you know that you've, you've invested in knowing about a certain thing. Yeah, yeah. And every year, you know, every year that you're working, you're investing into, into that career. Yeah. That's time you're not spending elsewhere. So all of yeah. that, that counts. And not just the time, but the effort, the energy, everything. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't know if it's a personal thing that it's just me struggling to 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 think that way. But I know that it was very hard for me to admit that I should be doing better, considering everything that I had accomplished or and sacrificed to reach mm -hmm. a certain point. Um, so when when all these new truths or new mm -hmm. statements. And become clear in your head and you're like okay maybe I should be at a certain level maybe maybe things should be clearer it's all mm. it's this cloud that starts starts you know, to lift yeah and you're like okay uh mm. yeah and inevitably you also think of all of the people around you or far from you that maybe haven't invested as much maybe you don't know that much and mm -hmm. and they're, they're doing a lot better than you so why would you be embarrassed of just putting yourself forward and saying, I can do this. Mm -hmm. and, and this is how much I need to charge for it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's still nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it takes that kind of work. But I think it's something that we should all allow ourselves to do a little bit more, especially as women, I'd say. Yeah, and it's a big thing I think we talked about a lot is like the sense of deserving and yeah. um, how much how much do you really deserve? You know, and who gets to decide how much do you deserve? Because a lot of times the idea of what you deserve it's, it's very much a construction, a constructed notion in your mind that's made up of whatever experiences you have, the, peer, the people around you. So we're, now here we have the, the example of one country where you're comparing yourself to like the average job market in this country. Well, what about in other countries? What about internationally? Or most people compare themselves to their closest friends or their family, you know, and well, are, are, is that really the yardstick you want to go by? What other yardsticks are out there? And then ultimately, where where should you be? There is no should. You can kind of be where you want, but you need to choose your yardstick. So do you want to make this your yardstick? Your yardstick. This will be easier to have as a yardstick because then you could just stay put. Um, but your life could probably be so much better if you set that as your yardstick. You'll have some work to do to you know up level and get there. But is isn't it worth it, right? Yeah, and I remember you saying, you know, I was I was at this pre-burnout stage when when I found the program and I remember saying let's wait until I can I actually mm -hmm. feel fresh in my head to put this kind of effort and I remember you saying why wait to improve or why wait to be more mm -hmm. successful or why wait to make, to make more money that sort of thing um which seems like you know just a statement but it, it makes mm -hmm. you think that we probably most of us keep postponing this kind yeah. of um you know that could could should or must should could something. yeah 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 um so you, it, yeah we also deserve to stop and think that maybe we could be in a different place and I'm talking about myself but I I see people around me that could be going through exactly the same journey because they deserve mm -hmm. it as much uh, just as much and yeah I don't think we stop enough times to think through what we should we could. Um, yeah, doing, you could be a I think that was why I said, you know what, if I was in your place, I would start right away because the sooner you start, the sooner you start creating that foundation and you can start making those decisions for yourself. And the more you wait, the more it's like, it's almost like you're waiting to start your life, your new life, you know? Yeah. So of course you can always wait, right? You can always wait one week, two weeks, one month, three months, yeah. one year, like you can always wait, you can always start again later, but the sooner you start, the sooner you start lifting the fog. And then it's so much better that in one year, that fog yeah. has already been lifted and you're working on your next challenge, et cetera. But yeah. you've already kind of dealt with that fog. You've dealt with those issues and you can move on, move on to other things instead of delaying old, old things. You know what I mean? Yeah. You save time, basically. And I think the pandemic was very eye-opening. and It sped up things in, in a way because at one point I was thinking, okay, what if there was no lockdown mm -hmm. right now? 
I wouldn't be able to be to, to socialize anyway because my workload was so heavy. I was yeah, working yeah. seven days a week. Uh, all I had time to was to go for walks and do some exercises. And, mm -hmm. and so what's the point? Is it just to work and not, not have a life? Mm -hmm. uh, so I might as well maybe leave 5% of my work aside for now and think through what I'm doing and what I mm -hmm. should be doing and what, what's next and trying to get some, some clarity on that. Yeah, it's actually a smart thing. I think a lot of us need to be reminded of this all the time. I know I'm always reminding myself of this, that it's actually a very, very smart move to stop telling yourself, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Not that it's a lie, it's absolutely true, but to, to kind of stop allowing the busyness to get in the way of yourself yeah. and taking your own decisions because actually the number one priority should be where are you going and are you really doing the right things before you get into the busyness? Um, and if you can put that as your number one to do on your list yeah. before you get into what, you know, maybe your boss wants to do or all your clients, yeah. et cetera, then uh, you'll start going much, much further. At least then you can be ticking off your to-do list with that clarity of what is this all for? Yeah, I guess the problem is that it only becomes your first number one priority when you're starting to get sick or you don't, yeah. you don't sleep very well or people around you start complaining that you're not available. And you shouldn't really have to reach that point to make that. So you should just see it as another task another it's like you are your own client i should have seen myself yeah. as my own client or someone yeah. that i have to take care of uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to see it. it it's a very good way to see it and i think um it's i mean whether you're an entrepreneur or not you need to see yourself that way and look after yourself because you're obviously your best asset and there's no point in going to work every day if you're not looking after yourself and uh, yeah. you're just trying to give to to everyone else yeah so, okay, so after you got started, what was the first thing that I told you to do? And was there anything a bit that you thought was a bit weird? Um, well, the even before we officially started, because there was this 10 steps or 10 goals of where, oh, where yeah, you yeah. see yourself at um, after the program ends, even though I had no idea what the program was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And just listing down things that I wanted from this investment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, just stopping to write down a list of things that are just about myself and my work and what I, what I want to show, not, not just my work, my life. Uh, that was quite, quite interesting to do. And, and then soon after that, I, at the beginning of the program with, with you, then you just said, drop down everything that you've always wanted to do, but you never got around to do. And it's crazy in the amount of things that come to your mind when mm. you're thrown that question. So that I found that quite frightening <laughs> um, because then you also realize the things that you've been leaving behind. But it, it's also it, exciting because you make you think, oh, maybe now is the time to start looking at these options again, even if it's to discard them. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's crazy, but it was a little bit scary or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good Scary exercise in a good to way. start with. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's it basically, it's already all in your head somehow. Yeah. It's, some things are more hidden than others, but you start putting them on the table and looking yeah. at them and thinking, which ones do I want to pick first? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, so after that, what was, was there anything else that was like surprising for you? Um, I mean, I just remember I, I talked about this cloud before, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that was the main thing was knowing that I was having a pretty lo lonely journey mm -hmm. of being in a field where I didn't have many people to talk to uh, that were doing the same thing as me or freelancing or working from home much longer before the, the, the pandemic started. And suddenly, all the things that were just bubbling by themselves in my head without mm -hmm. knowing to share yeah, yeah. were on the table. And I was starting to see categories of stuff and, and getting a little bit more clarity on which ones I want to, to start working on. And I also remember at one point some of the exercises or questions you were asking about uh, who do you admire? Um, what's a job that you see around you or that you've seen in the past that you really felt, oh, I'd like to do that. 
and and maybe I had not even stopped to ask myself that I was uh, not envying that person, but that I was admiring someone's job and not considering that I could be doing something along those lines. So it's very concrete. That's what I felt was, was um, quite different within the program versus just thinking on my own or talking to friends was to think very concretely about this person's job or the tasks that I enjoy doing or the ones that are making me more tired. And the more concrete you get about these things, the more clarity you also gain mm -hmm. in terms of what you want to, to do next, what you want to stop doing as much and what you really want to invest in and what you're completely fed up with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I you know, the number one complaint I hear actually about career coaching, which is also why I started this program, is that people say that it's all very interesting and they learn a lot about themselves, but it's still quite abstract and they feel like they know themselves maybe a bit better. They know that they're an ENTP yeah. or, you know, these different letters yeah. or this type of personality, but it doesn't concretely show them, you know, what role are they meant to go for and how do you go and get that role? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And I was kept for myself, I must say. So um, I think it was because I was reaching that point of really having no clue what I should do to even uh, have time for myself. I was willing to just try anything. And I, because I also knew there was this extra level of mm -hmm. uh, trust that I felt, okay, let's, let's see how this goes. Worst case scenario, I learned things that I already knew. Mm -hmm. So I don't learn actually, but yeah, yeah. Like I confirm things I already knew. And to be honest, I'm very uh, into self-development and I do therapy yeah, yeah. and I read a lot. And, and then and so I felt maybe that's just another level, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an investment somehow. But I did feel it was very different because uh, it was the right help at the right time. I don't know if for other people it would have to be at this stage of pre-burnout mm -hmm. or whatever. Hopefully not, but it's it's about having very concrete questions. Like I have, uh, like this invitation for for work came through. What should I do? Uh, and then yeah. you ask the concrete questions of, okay, what do you see yourself? Why why would you take this job now? And to think through things with me. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the you know the the personalization number one, where it's like, okay, here's the actual situation. It's not just yeah. theoretical, like you know you can go on youtube and look at networking advice and see all these nice theories about how to network yeah. how to level up in your career etc but that's totally different from being able to say okay here's the situation my boss is saying this um you know this is what interests me how do i respond to this exact person here's our relationship you know that's that's a different yeah. thing that's actually i don't know how to like. say no to this person mm -hmm. like how do i define this this job that is not paying me anything so i'm going to so that was yeah, the yeah. other thing, right? I was doing a lot of things for Bono and I still mm -hmm. enjoy them. And I yeah. still wish I could do everything because it's all in my field and I like it. Mm -hmm. But at one point you just have to prioritize something else. And yeah. and how do you even say no? Uh, it was something I struggled with. Especially as you move forward in your career, you know, your decisions need to be, it's, hard, it's a hard thing to do, but you need to start taking decisions differently than you did yeah. maybe a few years ago in your career when that was yeah. a good opportunity. It's not that now it's a bad opportunity, but to get to your next goal that you want to get yeah. to, your decisions, your decision making needs to change a little bit. And because physically, I really wasn't. Yeah, no, exactly. Able exactly. to do it all, and then I might as well just do two things that I know I'm going to deliver and people mm -hmm. are happy with, then say yeah, everything, and, and then in the end, none of them is really good because mm -hmm. I'm tired. Yeah. Um, so it's good to have that excuse as well, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, knowing very concretely when things come through, what can we, mm -hmm. what should I do now that is different from before and that's going to help me in the mm -hmm. long run. And what, um, what do you feel now is like the, the number one biggest thing that's that's better for you? Um, so one of the things that I was struggling with was, and we talked a lot about this, was that I had very operational jobs that was executing mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's how I, I mean, it's part of a lot of communication work, right? That you have to just deliver yeah. and um, produce and, you know, very concrete things that are time consuming and just take your time and 
course you to be available for certain events or projects and it's it, it piles up very easily and i wasn't uh, well i was starting to realize that i could uh give advice to some of my clients or and even sometimes to to friends or people working in the same area or within the pandemic context that people were asking me for my opinion about how communications was handled and i was starting to realize that there is a specific uh, view here that is not so complex to me anymore and I can actually provide. So how can I leverage that but have time to do it if, I, if I'm constantly doing the operational work? Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest change was to think that I can use my time better mm -hmm. in um, providing the strategic advice and doing the strategic work versus executing it not mm -hmm. that uh, not that i you know it's just me right now in this room and i yeah, wouldn't yeah. have the thing to say you do this you do that but i i allow myself now more time to and also the confidence and the trust in myself to say let's do things this way or what do you think about um maybe not going in that direction in this direction but going in that direction and feeling that actually that can help a certain project or team or whatever. Um, and like even last weekend, I was um, talking in a, a plenary session for um, a, um, faculty of medicine. And so about how communication was handled during the pandemic. And I, I realized it, it came very natural to me that I could be giving my opinion on how I think things have gone. Mm -hmm well or not so well and i don't think I, I would give myself that level of trust before and mm. it became clear that i was uh i have enough experience to say some things of course i won't know everything and i'm still learning and i always prefer to ask than to answer mm -hmm. but like you know as a former journalist but i was feeling a lot more confident in in things that i didn't think I deserve to do this work. Yeah, so it's really, it's really giving giving yourself permission, number one, and then getting to that level where you are going from, you know, we all have these phases in our career from new grad where you're just there to learn, you're there to execute, do what you're do what you you've been told, right? And then working your way up to actually being the one who can give the advice and someone else can can execute. And how do you bridge that gap and Get to that level knowing that you're perfectly capable of being operational and executing it's not yeah. that you don't want to do it of course you can and enjoy doing it but to get to that next level those kind of things need to to shift yeah and it, it's uh as a consequence it gives you more motivation because you mm -hmm. see things changing and you, you see that you're having an impact and that you're building things and yeah. and also learning from a different level right mm -hmm. because you deal and work more closely with people that are higher up and and mm -hmm. i always like to learn so it's good to keep learning from the best and yeah um yeah but it's still it, it still feels strange to talk about these things uh, yeah, I, i'm yeah. comfortable talking to you because that's how we talk for mm -hmm. quite a few, few weeks mm -hmm. it's it, it's not something that comes very natural to me yet but it's clear that now, whenever I have these doubts or mm -hmm. uh, that I'm asked to do something, it's there is this voice here telling me. So remember when we talked about this, or um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what it's is kind this? of guiding you in the right direction? Yeah, no? exactly. Mm -hmm. To remind me of the questions that I asked myself and that I answered, and that it took me a while to understand. Like where do I want to go? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. even even sometimes when you know you have a task. Uh, and you still you don't even stop to to think, mm -hmm. do I enjoy doing this? And now it's it's very obvious to me that I think through how much I enjoy certain things. And yeah, yeah. What do I find easy? What do I find difficult? What challenges me in a good way that makes me want to do more of it? Mm -hmm. And I think in the end, it just saves you time because you're not like a computer delivering stuff. You're more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more intellectually challenging. 
that's yeah, right. that's actually really exciting to me because it just shows how important it is not to to to, fo to focus on habit changes and the way shifting the ways that you think, not just focusing on okay, I'm going to do this program. It's eight weeks long, and you know what's going to happen in those eight weeks. It's more about what's going to happen after those eight weeks, and yeah. you saying after those eight weeks, I'm still thinking like this. I'm focused more on what do I want, where am I going. Is this going to match up with my priorities? The fact that you got used to asking those questions during those weeks and you're still at the, you know, the, you are automatically asking the right questions in your brain yeah. and you're able to answer yourself. Um, that I think is actually yeah. a really, really cool and really important win. It, it, it's easy to fall back into the hamster wheel, I should say. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's been programmed into you for probably right. your whole, whole lifetime. Yeah. So it, it's more about building the discipline to, mm -hmm. to change some of the habits. Like um, one thing I started with you was the brag book here. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> so whenever something good happens, I write it mm -hmm. down. I, I haven't been very good, but it's here. And I mm -hmm. try to, to remind myself to focus on the good things that happen versus, mm -hmm. oh, no, I should have done this or I lost that or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so focusing on the future and the positive versus what has gone back or um, what has gone what what I have failed what what do I miss what yeah uh, the, the, the time that I wasted sometimes I think that way and I think what changed in this process was my mindset my mindset that was very easily programmed into the past and into mm -hmm. the negative and I'm still very much that kind of person but yeah. if and we I talked about myself. this before because you both came from journalism as well. It gets extra programmed into us when yeah. you're a journalist because you're you're trained to be quite cynical about the world and about everything. Yeah, and everything is mm -hmm. pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so these, you know, the the Kla Height planner, the these. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. both using. Where do I have my? Yeah, idea? it's not on my desk now. We're both but... using the same agenda now. Exactly. <laughs> and this this whole habit mm -hmm. of at the end of each month, looking back at the month, not yeah. necessarily of, of, at what went wrong, but at what excited me and what, what I was really happy about. And then thinking ahead, what would I like to focus this month on and this week when the, mm -hmm. the week, week we goes. I think I wouldn't have been very good or excited at, at doing that before the program because I was just mm -hmm. programmed into journaling, which is, tends to be more about you know the sad stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah um and, and now i try to focus more okay let's start the week in, in a good spirit or mm -hmm. let's, let's try at least to to focus on something that's good even if at the end of the week i look back and i feel that like, mm, that didn't go very well so let's try again um, yeah like basically just the habit of redirecting your focus in the direction that you want to go as opposed to having that automatic kind of going going to what you don't want so yeah it's like the productive thinking versus the the unproductive thinking yeah and i think i mean i was lucky to do the coaching and therapy at the same time and i think mm -hmm. they serve different purposes and i still very much like to do the, the therapy the traditional therapy where you look back mm -hmm. and you try to find reasons why yeah, you behave yeah. a certain way but then it's not that it's not useful, but for certain decisions and day-to-day -day things that relate to your job and career, it's good to have a more, you know, practical kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're two very different things, but from my experience, people who, um, I don't want to say need therapy, I think everyone can probably benefit from therapy, right? It's like, it's a different yeah. process, but of course it's also um, very eye-opening for a lot of people. You can, when you talk to someone who's done therapy, you sort of know it even before they mention they've yeah. done therapy because they're just so self-aware and know themselves really well. So it's a really nice thing actually to talk to someone who's doing or has done therapy. Um, and then, and I have someone else now that I'm working with who also has been doing therapy. So it's quite complimentary because you can be so self-aware of yourself and your life, why you are where you are now, why do mm -hmm. you think the way that you think? And then I think the job that we do together with the coaching is more like, okay, now what are the actual action steps and what practical things you need to do to get to, to your goal? So of course, there's yeah. a lot of mindset involved in that, but it's less about, yeah, unpacking the past and um, analyzing the past and more about action steps. And yeah. 
and also the frequency i should say because i think at the time i was doing therapy every two weeks and with yeah. you i was maybe talking to you several times of a day so it's mm -hmm. a lot more fast paced and you get more out of it with initial period yeah um, which for me at the time was very important because i was getting you know these different job opportunities or or requests or mm -hmm. i was living i was falling behind with a lot of stuff and so i needed immediate help on how mm -hmm. to deal with it so the practical side was quite um was a big difference yeah yeah so so tell me what would you say to someone who's on the fence who's thinking about what you're doing uh, who's sort of in a similar place to where you were before where like they're successful but they feel like there's that another level there's a new level to crack or they're they're doing well but they're kind of confused about maybe what the next steps are and they're on the fence about doing something like this what would you tell them um so i think i could look back it's been maybe six months or not even that mm -hmm. since we finished and and looking back i would probably challenge that person who is on the fence mm -hmm. to try and do it uh, on their own <laughs> mm -hmm. and see if, if in six months time they feel clarity it, it may well happen but i think in my case it was really as i was saying before all these doubts all these things that i was thinking on my own without really feeling it resonated with anyone else around me because i was working in a very specific field mm -hmm. all these things suddenly were on the table and i could say okay this is for later this is for now i'm leaving this behind um i want to focus on that i i've done that and i love that but i don't want to do that anymore mm -hmm. And maybe I would have reached that conclusion by myself, but probably it would have taken me much longer. And maybe I would have gone into burnout before <laughs> mm -hmm. because I was really at uh, a, a turning point. Almost, yeah. yeah. So I think if, if you have, uh, I was going to say if you have the time, but I didn't have the time. You didn't have I the didn't. time, though. Yeah. I think that's what's so great about what you did, actually, because you all everyone always feels like they're going to do a big life change when they have the time. But I've rarely seen many examples of people's lives that they're just like have a free schedule and everything's great. And now they're feeling perfectly energetic, healthy, and with lots of money to pay for something like this. And now they're going to do it. Like you never encounter yeah. anyone like that. You know, everyone's busy. Everyone is yeah. No time, no money, no energy. But it's it's one of those things where if you want to make a change, then you have to make a change. And I I really should say that if I had waited, maybe I wouldn't be in the current job that I have now because in terms mm -hmm. of timings, I was hoping to finish a project and take some time off and then mm -hmm. and then focus on my coaching and my future yeah, yeah, yeah. and what I'm gonna do. But I would have lost this opportunity because the the recruitment was ongoing mm -hmm. and. I was still very confused or in a place of, yeah, yeah. of not knowing what was the right thing for me. And so during the coaching, while everything was happening, made things a lot clearer in my head so that when the recruitment was in the final stages, I was very clear about uh, mm -hmm. where I wanted to go. And so, and I'm a big planning person and always wanting to find the right opportunity to do things in the right way. But I was losing control anyway so i might as well mm -hmm. use some of that time to look after myself and and that includes thinking through what i should be doing next so mm -hmm. i guess my advice or whatever would be to not wait for the right time if, if you mm -hmm. feel that you can that you need help now go for it yeah. um, i still feel that the program that i could have done a lot more within the program but doing it later with more time mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily be better than doing yeah. it maybe at 70 percent or 80 percent mm -hmm. uh, when i, I think was it's one of those things that the program I, can be it can go very very deep you know so you can always feel like oh if i had more time i would go even deeper and deeper and deeper um but then yeah. if you don't just get started time is passing you by anyway so you also lose all the time that you're waiting around to have the perfect time to start and the beauty of the program is you can go back and keep going yeah. into the modules at any time and 
also I don't disappear like we're still in touch you know so you can still yeah. discuss your next decisions with me and, and all that kind of thing so it's so much better to just get started and leverage that time into your next decisions and your next career and and all those other things versus staying kind of in the fog that you're in now and then waiting yeah. until later yeah I remember um a lot of the things from the program and just like in therapy you, at one point you know what would my therapist ask me right now about this crisis that I'm going through and I can also say so when I'm struggling with something at work then what would Sally ask me or say now and because you you build some mechanisms in your own head yeah, and yeah. um so it does help you after program as well because mm-hmm. I was I was a little bit worried about being such a short program mm-hmm. but it does give you a lot of tools that you can go back to when using different yeah. um different contexts so that's cool. really the beginning yeah the foundation um, so kind of okay so what are your final words of wisdom what else would you want to tell uh, 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 i think this covers a lot of people i mean one thing because you know this is career coaching, right? But I think it became clear from the beginning that you cannot detach career from your personal life. And I, I'm the kind of person that, that invested, sometimes I even wonder, too much time in my career and neglected my personal life a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think not separating job and, and life is mm-hmm. probably... Uh, my word of wisdom, <laughs> mm, uh, because I'm together, like, actually. yeah, and and it yeah. is it, it it in a way it also makes your job easier, your job mm-hmm. as in your task easier, because you should see yourself as a package. You don't really, uh, especially these days, you don't really split your job person and your personality and what your life is about. So yeah. investing in career is, in my view. But in career coaching, is in my view, very much an investment in what you want to do with your mm-hmm. life in general. Even if it's to say, I want to drop my career and just, yeah. you know, live on the beach do and not else. work. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So whatever the, the, the outcome is, I think it should keep both together. And probably I wasn't doing that for a long time. Mm-hmm. So now it's clear what I want from either side because I package them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's so interesting, like the whole idea of like separating personal and professional and how most people think that by pr- separating personal and professional, you're protecting your personal. But actually, I've come to think of it as the opposite. Like the more you try to separate them, the more you start feeling weird and split and inauthentic at work and maybe not taking care of yourself because, oh, that's just my personal life. I need to focus on my job right now as opposed to when you see yourself as, as this package deal you realize you need to take care of yourself otherwise you're not even going to have a job if you lose your health or or, or something like that yeah exactly. or if you're not happy in your job um and you're not you're not happy you think you're still delivering but eventually your lack of happiness in your job is going to affect your output and then your 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 professional life is going to be affected as well yeah and then you go into the hamster wheel yeah <laughs> exactly so it's a, it's a cycle mm-hmm. yeah that's what i would say i think I feel like the cloud has gone now. It's mm-hmm. still, you know, just like the weather comes and goes. But yeah, yeah, um, you have that kind of it makes makes it clear what what's important to you, even if you don't know what what you want to do, where you want to go. If it changes with time, then at least you have some more clarity on what kind of ask, what, what kind of questions you should be asking yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you know how to get yourself out of the fog whenever it comes it comes back. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. who to turn to, or what kind of yeah. Even just the decision to take some time, like the day I found the program and I signed up for the career roadmap was just this afternoon that I decided I was going to take for myself or something that was a bit different, and not yeah. just yeah. you know doing my day to day job. Like starting to prioritize yourself. Yeah. And your so, future. And I think that could apply to anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it's been a really good um, Yeah, I'm so happy journey. for you. you. You seem so much more zen and 
stabilized and happy with what you're doing and you've, you've leveled up as an expert in your field as well, which is really, really deserving. Yes, thank you. It's I, I do feel that way and a lot of things have happened since I moved house mm -hmm. and uh, it feels like it's been very hectic few months, but it's mm -hmm. it's not just this hectiness for the sake of hectiness. It's, it's more. Yeah, it's like hec hectic things that are leading somewhere. Yeah, not just chaos for the sake of it. Yeah, it's uh, there's there's a plan in it somehow. Yeah, you're building yeah, that feeling yeah. of like growing and building. Yeah, and it all started mm -hmm. in a pretty chaotic state. So mm -hmm. that's when that's when you joined. So thanks for for listening to me at that at that <laughs> time when I was pretty desperate. No, I mean I love seeing where where you come from and then where you go and then looking back and going, oh wow, like this is yeah. a different person in front of me right now. Yeah. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, sorry, I lost my voice today. But luckily, we made it through to the end. <laughs> yeah, I could do and, perfectly. Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what's next for you, Deborah. Yes, we'll be in touch. <laughs>